Hey everybody, I want to preface the video you're about to watch. Um, so this isn't really a, a, a super cool recipe. Um, it's me breaking down a brisket. But um, so the date it was filmed was March 25th, 2020. Um, we are self uh, isolating because of the COVID-19 virus and um, I just wanted to find something that I could do while we're at home to keep myself entertained. But um, we are doing our part by not going back out to the store. So I have lots of frozen meats. The, the people that know me know I barbecue a lot. Um, I have pantries full of oddball items. So uh, I've made it my goal to use what I have here on hand. Instead of stacking up more things in the pantry or making unnecessary runs to the store, um, I'm going to sacrifice some of that barbecue meat uh, into making multiple meals. Um, so the brisket will get broken down. I will use it for ground beef. I will grill it. And I haven't decided what I'm going to do with the point yet. But if this video doesn't interest you, you're not going to hurt my feeling by not watching it. It's, it can be interesting, but it's not going to be some sort of fancy meal at the end. Um, we will make it into fancy meals, but maybe, uh, I think, especially at this time, um, a lot of people are looking to get away from the news for a few minutes, um, not worry about what's going on. So if that's a kind of diversion, maybe just something to play in the background, I hope you enjoy it. And maybe it'll be useful. Enjoy the video. Hi everybody. Okay, today, so uh, again, we're during, we are in the middle of the uh, stay at home part of uh, COVID-19. Um, grocery stores haven't had a lot of good food, so uh, I had this brisket in the freezer waiting for a rainy day um, uh, for a barbecue, but uh, since I couldn't get ground beef, uh, I'm going to break this down. I'm going to make some ground beef out of it. I'm going to take a section of it and I'm going to set it aside for marinating and grilling. And then we'll have a third section or maybe even a fourth. This is a eight pound brisket. So it's a full brisket. So I can probably get quite a few meals out of this. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, break it down into sections. Uh, this is the point of the brisket it has more fat um, the brisket has a good fat cap but when I go to make ground beef out of this um, I expect I may add I have some pork jowl bacon um, which I've already trimmed uh, mostly what I've left over is fat so I can cut in some of that fat into this but I'm going to show you how to make ground beef out of a, a brisket so let's get this opened up uh, notice again I don't like the clean so foil parchment paper, cutting board. Um, that'll save time in the long run and a sharp knife. I hope you're all doing well. We are and Curtis is doing schoolwork. Cindy and I are both doing our jobs as usual, which we're able to do remotely, which is great. Um, we're having a good time being creative with cooking, so I'm try not to make a mess. There's your brisket. Get this in the trash. Just rinse off my hands. I already washed my hands the right way. 20 seconds. I'm just going to rinse them. Now, this paper towel. Uh, just to make the brisket a little easier to work with, we're going to just blot it dry here. Alright, so I guess the first thing to do is knowing that the flat is the leaner portion, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of portion this up. So once we get to this end, that's where we're in almost a different type of meat. So. I'm going to start here. I have a kitchen scale here to the side. I'm going to 
weigh this as I go. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to get my tray on here and I'm going to zero it. So I'm going, I'm looking to break this down into about two pound cuts. So yeah, we're going to dead eye this. I have no idea how accurate. I have a feeling this is going to be a little more than two pounds, but we'll live. Now you can see we've got a good amount of fat here. And I might even trim some of this off later. Let's see how much this weighs. Oh yeah, so went a little bit over. It's just over two and a half pounds. I th I'll call that good. So a pretty good estimate. All right, so we're gonna do that again. Now this, this is a nice thick section, so I'm gonna make it a little smaller. And that'll leave us the, this is, I'm going to trim this off. That'll leave us this end, which is the point. And we may get a barbecue out of that because uh, it's a perfectly acceptable piece. So I'm going to take it right here to where the flat meets the point. This is still a little frozen, which is actually good when you're trying to cut it because it, it behaves so much more. And before we turn the, a section of this into ground beef we're going to almost freeze it again and I'll tell you the why of that later so you can see right here this is the flat this is where the point starts to meet the flat so um, and we have a much bigger fat cap starting right there lots of good marbling so let's weigh this one okay so this one's a full three pounds Hmm. Might have to trim. Uh, you know what? I'm going to trim some of that fat off. And you'll pretty much see that this is straight up fat. Now, we aren't going to throw that away. That can go in with our uh, beef to make a nice... We're going to go for an 80-20. So what we're going to do is we're going to weigh our leaner parts. We're going to kind of guesstimate a little bit and um, try to make just like what you would get in the grocery store. We're going to take our meat portion and weigh it and our fat portion and weigh it, do the math, and see if we can't make us some acceptable 80-20 ground beef or in that area. So now I trimmed some of that off. It was 3.1. Two pounds, 10 ounces. So again, very close to this one. So these are both the same size. And the point itself, I'm going to save that. I need to, I need to figure out what I want to do with that. Um, the other thing is, okay, so I'm going to hold this close here. See if you can see. Do you see the muscle fibers, how they're going this way? Uh, when you're cutting, especially a brisket, you don't want to cut with these, okay? Because when you cook it, if you have it cut this way, you're going to have these long strings. It's going to be stringy meat, and it's not going to be fun to eat. So you definitely want to cut across the grain. Um, I do it without thinking about it, but it's something you want to know before you start cutting a brisket. So which is my ground beef? What do you think? I, I kind of like uh, this one for my ground beef. So the next thing I'm going to do is trim this up even more. So let's get the fat out of the way. I'm going to try to make, I'm going to cube this. Um, I'm going to take it and cut it into about one inch cubes. So we're going to go through it like this first. Give me two approximately one inch thick pieces of meat to work with. I'm going to set this here. And then I'm going to cube this. And again, much colder, much easier to cut. So you can see this part is starting to warm up and it's starting to jiggle and move as I try to cut it. 
which is a little bit of a pita towards the middle here. It's still pretty solid, so um, the knife goes through it and you get much more even. You're able to get much more square cuts. And this doesn't have to be perfect. If you were going to cook them in this form, when you cook, you want your stuff to be as uniform as possible because uniform shapes and uniform sizes translate into uniform cooking. So everything finishes when you think it should. Everything looks the same. I mean, you can rough cut some things. That's fine. Um, but if you're going for style points, you definitely want to present something that looks like it was prepped well. So, and I don't always go for style points. I think, you know, that some of that flat may go into a chili. I could chop it up and that'd be pretty cool. I'm going to cut this corner off here because this is mostly fat. I'm trying to keep this, you can see this big chunk of fat here. So I'm trying to kind of separate my fat from my meat here. And when I, when I get done cubing this, we'll weigh again. And with just the meat, now that I've done some further trimming, I'm going to take this off. We'll see where we are on meat, and then we'll know exactly how much, or at least approximately, how much fat we should add. So brisket can be tough, but when you're preparing it like this, it's really just good stuff. So let me take this corner off right here. All right, and that is that's like 50/50 there. So let's see where we're at. Oh, the scale turn. I didn't like that. All right, remove your vessel. Okay. Zero that out again. All right, Let's see where we are for straight up beef here, or mostly straight up beef. It's one pound. We're at just about a pound and a half. So what I'm going to do here, I am going to steal some more uh, from one of these. Uh, let's take some from this end right here. And I want to do this because I'm lazy and I want the math to be easy. So let's take this. It's getting soft, getting hard to cut. That's going to be my marinade later, so I'm going to take this half. I want to get, I want to get this to my my leaner portions to about two pounds. So in that case, I can add a half a pound of fat and be relatively correctly measured for 80/20. Is that right? Should be right. <laughs> yep, yep, we're gonna need this little little extra. Almost there. One pound ten ounces. I guess we're gonna have to take the rest of this. Let's just do it. I have plenty here, so I mean I can do whatever. up there again let's trim this 
fat cap off there. Set that aside. This is going to do it here. You can feel now that I'm closer to the point. Uh, this is very, very. This is tough meat. I mean, that's why you slow and low it usually. Um, I'm going to marinate it, but um, up to here towards the point, it becomes much more supple. Uh, so you have really two cuts of meat in a brisket, um, in my opinion. Um, definite differences in texture. One more time. Where are we at? Okay. Now, I gotta see where we're at. Let's see where we're at. I might have messed that up. That's a bill thing. Let's see. I might have gone over too because I was, I zeroed it with stuff in there last time. So that's a pound. Point six. Oh, we're gonna be close. One pound twelve, thirteen, fourteen. We're there. That's good enough. Get this out, a little bit of this. The odds and ends. Um, stew meat, you know, whatever. Love a good stew. All right, we're there. Two pounds of relatively lean beef. So now let's get up to a half pound of fat, fatty stuff. So I want to get to, I want to get to two and a half pounds. Two point one. It's Almost there. Two more ounces of fat. I just needed two more ounces, so I'm not going to reserve that because it's a pain in my butt. Okay, so again, throwing nothing away, fat could be rendered. Um, I have a vacuum sealer, which I'll seal this up in. Some of these little odds and ends, I can trim this to become stew meat. Um, I got, you know, a pretty good amount of fat here. Um, I can trim this meat off and put it into a broth or whatever. So nothing's going to waste. Um, this and this. This will definitely go into a marinade. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wash my hands the right way here real quick. So bear with me, as I'm sure you've all been doing over and over again, washing your hands the right way, taking the time to do it right. Getting your nails, getting your palms, getting the backs, getting the tips, getting in between, doing all that washing as well as you can. Excellent. Alright, so as to not 
get my hands dirty again. I'm going to grab a pair of tongs. Have to do that. I'm going to come over here. I am grabbing a couple of Ziploc bags. And we are going to put this stuff away. So first, I'm going to get what is going to be my ground beef later. So let's get that all in a bag here. So what we're going to do, I've said it a couple times about how processing meats, a lot of times, one of the important things is to make sure that it's cold, um, especially if you're going to do something like this. So we're going to get this back to frozen just about not I don't want ice cube hard but I mean it's at least at least an hour in the freezer maybe more so it's crystallized and very very firm to the touch then when we take it out we're gonna be all ready to throw it in the food processor or in our case the ninja and grind it at that point reason being uh, is that uh, if you were to do it in the blender now, A, it's not gonna, it's not gonna grind as well. It's gonna hit those blades and that softness of the meat is gonna absorb some of that impact and it's gonna fly around. The, the fat will warm up and it'll give you that smear all over the side of your blender. Like this, it's, it's gonna all kinda hold together. It's gonna fracture a lot better. It's gonna turn into a, a better ground beef, a better end form, so. This is why we do that. The rest of this also, I'm going to do the same for the brisket I intend to marinate. So um, about an hour, hour and a half before I'm ready to really make it, I'm going to go ahead and toss this in the freezer. But for now we have this broken down. I'm gonna put this away and we'll come back later and finish up. Hey, okay, so we're going to finish up making our ground beef. Um, about an hour ago, I went ahead and took the cubed beef and put it in the freezer. So it should be nice and firm right now. It already had the fat in it. So now all that's left to do is to grind it up so it's, it's well ground and there's no big chunks in there. So let's do that. I'm going to get a vessel down here to put it in once I'm done. Alright, so this is the part where you want to move semi quickly. It's not a solid block of ice, but it is nice and firm. There's ice crystals. Let's put that in there. Nice and evenly distributed. We have two. We're going to go with more than one thing here. I might get this started because I don't want I don't want anything to get missed. So we're going to go ahead and give this just a couple pulses to get rid of some of that air space in there. Uh, I'm going to just pulse it. few more before I put the remainder in there just to, just to be sure just know that you know as you're doing this that those blades are creating some friction that uh, warm this up so we want it as cold as possible let's put the last bit in there and go for broke 
I'm going to go ahead and put it on uh, medium. And... All right, we need to get some of this down in there. You can see, so maybe I did ever do it. Um, this will work out, but um, some of this top stuff here isn't getting in the blades, and it's just going to sit there. I might have to pull some out. And that's what you get for rushing. Pack it down again. The stuff down near the bottom you can see is really well done. So let's give it a little more whirl here. Oh, yeah. That one needs to do this. So, kitchen air. This is what you get for overloading it. My fault. I'm going to go ahead and take some of these chunky parts out and just set them back in the bag for a second because I tried to rush. Tried to put too much in there. This is like crowding the pan. Never want to put too much of anything in anything. But you feel like, oh, well, I want to get this all done at once. You go ahead and do it, and every time it's going to teach you the same lesson. It just doesn't pay off. I mean, I can see that there's no blades up here, yet I put meat up there. What do I think is going to happen? Go to Bill. All right. All right, let's give this more appropriately loaded. Blender, a little bit of that's looking good now. All right, so let's just get it, get it nice and packed down and get everything in those blades. It's still nice and cold, which is good. It was very cold. Um, I don't know, depending on your blender, you can probably have it quite cold and it would still handle it okay. doing right now is making sure that any of the if there's any large pieces that have kind of glommed onto the side of the blender I'm making sure they get down in there I want to make sure there's no big pieces of, of fat but this is looking really good now all right let's take this first batch out make sure there's no giant pieces there's one or two one or two bigger than I like but I'm gonna go through it and see but otherwise it's looking a lot like ground beef and tonight we're gonna be lucky enough that even though we couldn't get ground beef at the store because everybody's doing a little bit of panic shopping which I don't fault it's I understand um, but we were unable to get any ground beef for the past couple weeks and one of our weekly traditions is Cindy will one night a week make her spaghetti which is very very good and we weren't thinking we were going to get any of that but now we will all right so here's the remainder this should go pretty quick here I'm hoping <laughs> much faster when you don't overload it, isn't it? Right, almost there. Now if I had done that from the get-go, might have been a little easier.
some really good ground beef from our biscuit. So I hope in a pinch that you guys will remember this and maybe use it. We will let you know later on how the spaghetti went, but it looks really good. It should be fatty enough because we cut the fat in, and um, I am expecting a good dinner. All right, y'all have a good day. I will talk to you later.